Ukraine Zelensky Trapped by Moscow and Washington, article by Thierry Meshan. The evolution of the balance of power in the Ukrainian battlefield and the tragic episode of the G20 in Bali signal the reversal of the situation. If the West still believes that Russia will be defeated soon, the United States has really begun secret negotiations with Russia. They are ready to leave Ukraine and place the blame only on Volodymyr Zelensky. As in Afghanistan, the awakening will be brutal. Talking about 10 days ago in Brazil, in uh, Brussels, with the leader of the uh, ministers of European Parliament, MEPs, who is said to be open-minded, I heard him tell me that the Ukrainian conflict was certainly complicated, but the most obvious thing was that Russia had invaded that country. I responded by noting that international law requires Germany, France, and Russia to implement Resolution 2202, which only Moscow did. I went on to remind him of the responsibility to protect the populations should their own government fail to do so. He cut me off and asked, if my government were to protest the fate of its citizens in Russia and attack that country, would you find that normal? Yes, I replied, if you had a Security Council resolution. You have got startled. He changed the subject. Three times I asked him if we could discuss the issues of Ukraine, radical nationalists. He refused three times, and we parted our ways acrimoniously. The question of the responsibility to protect should have been weighed. This principle does not allow war, but a police operation with military means. This is why the Kremlin is careful not to label this conflict a war, but as a special military operation. Both characterizations refer to the same events, but a special military operation limits the conflict. Upon the entry of his troops into Ukraine, President, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin made it clear that he did not intend to annex this territory, but only to liberate the populations persecuted by the Ukrainian Nazis. In a long previous article, I pointed out that while the term Nazi is correct in the historical sense, it does not correspond to the way these people define themselves. They use the expression radical nationalists. Let us remind you that Ukraine is the only state in the world that has and implements an explicitly racist constitution. Nothing that international law rules in Russia's favor does not mean, noting that the international law rules in Russia's favor does not mean that it is given a blank check. Everyone must judge how they apply the law. Westerners have always found Russia to be Asiatic, savage and brutal, even if they themselves have appeared much more destructive on many occasions. Reversal of the situation? Having clarified the Russian and Western views, it's clear that some events triggered a Western development. We are entering winter, a harsh season in Central Europe. The Russian population has known since Napoleon's invasion that they cannot defeat such a large country. Thus he learned to use precisely the vastness of his territory and what are the proper times to defeat those who attack him with winter. The front is frozen for several months. Anyone can notice that, contrary to the narrative that the Russians were defeated, the Russian army liberated Donbass and part of Novorossiya. Winter fell, the Kremlin withdrew the, the liberated population living north of the Dnieper, where it then withdrew its army, abandoned the part of Kershaw located on the north bank of the Dnieper River, for the first time, a natural border, the Dnieper River, marks a border between territories controlled by Kiev and those controlled by Moscow. However, during the interwar period, it was the absence of physical borders that threw all successive powers into Ukraine. From now on, Russia is able to hold. From the beginning of the conflict, Ukraine can count on the unlimited assistance of the United States and its allies. However, the U.S. midterm elections have removed the Biden administration's majority in the House of Representatives. From now on, Washington's support will be limited. Likewise, the European Union is also finding its limits. Its populations do not understand the rising energy costs, let alone they cannot pay them, obviously. The closing of some factories and the inability to heat normally. Finally, in some circles of power, after admiring the talents of the 
actor Volodymyr Zelensky, they begin to wonder about the rumors about his hit sudden fortune. In eight months of war, he reportedly became a billionaire. The charge is unverified, but the Pandora Papers 2021 dealer makes this credible. Does one need to bleed from four veins to see that donations do not reach Ukraine, but disappear into offshore companies? The Anglo-Saxon, hence London and Washington, wanted to turn the G20 in Bali into an anti-Russian summit. They had initially lobbied for Moscow's exclusion from the group as they succeeded in the G8. But if Russia were absent, China, by far the world's largest exporter, would not have come. Also, France's Emmanuel Macron was appointed to persuade the other guests to sign a bloody declaration against Russia. For two days, Western news agencies assured that the case was secured, but in the end, the final statement, although it summarized the Western view, closes the discussion with the following words. There were other views and different assessments of the situation and other sanctions. Recognizing that the G20 is not the appropriate forum for solving security problems, we know that security issues can have significant consequences for the global economy. In other words, for the first time, the West has failed to impose its vision of the world on the rest of the planet. The trap. Worse, the West imposed a videotaped interview by Volodymyr Zelensky, as they did on August 24th, September 27, at the United Nations Security Council. However, while Russia has tried in vain to oppose it in September in New York, it accepted it in November in Bali. At the Security Council, France, which held the presidency, had violated the rules of procedure to address a head of state via video. By contrast, at the G20, Indonesia held a completely neutral position and was in no danger of agreeing to give him the floor without Russian permission. It was surely a trap. President Zelensky, who does not know the functioning of these institutions, fell into the trap. After mocking Moscow's action, he called for its exclusion from the G19. In other words, the little Ukrainian gave, on behalf of the Anglo-Saxon, an order to the heads of state, prime ministers and foreign ministers of the 20 largest world powers, and it was not he heeded. In fact, the dispute between these leaders was not about Ukraine, but about their submission or not to the American world order. All Latin America, African, four Asian participants said that this dominance is over, that from now on the world is multipolar, and they're not going to listen, in other words, to the United States dictating to them what they're going to do and not, and not do. Westerners must have felt the ground shaking beneath their feet. They weren't the only ones. Volodymyr Zelensky saw for the first time that his godfathers, until of the West that is, until now absolute rules of the world, let him fall without hesitation in order to maintain their position a little longer. It's possible that Washington is in communication with Moscow. The United States notices that on the world scale, things are turning against them. They will not hesitate for a second to blame the Ukrainian regime. William Burns, director of the CIA, has already met with Sergei Narishkin, the director of the SRV in Turkey, these discussions follow those of Jake Sullivan, the U.S. National Security Advisor, with some Russian officials. However, Washington has nothing to negotiate in Ukraine. Two months before the conflict in Ukraine, I explained that the essence of the problem had nothing to do with that country, nor with NATO. It's essentially the end of the unipolar world. It's therefore not surprising that a few days after the G20 slap, Volodymyr Zelensky publicly denied his godfathers in America for the first time. He accused Russia of firing a missile at Poland and insisted, while the Pentagon said it was a mistake, it was a, mistake, it was a Ukrainian anti-missile missile. He continued to act in line with the Treaty of Warsaw, concluded April 22, 1920, by the radical nationalists of Simon Petliura and the Pidulski regime to push Poland into war with Russia. This is the second time Washington has rung a bell 
in Zelensky's ears, but he did not want to hear it. Presumably, these contradictions will no longer manifest themselves in public. Western positions will soften. Ukraine has been warned. In the coming months, it will have to negotiate with Russia. President Zelensky can plan his escape now because his wounded countrymen will not forgive him for deceiving them. This is by Thierry Méchant, translation by Christian Akiria. I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.